Statistics and Excel hypothesis testing T distribution with a two tail where the standard deviation of the population is not known. Get ready and some coffee because if we want to get futuristic, we need statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because... Apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com below. Example, practice, blank, example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab, having pre-formatted cells, so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, as you can see, is blank. We will build this from a blank worksheet practicing our Excel tools as we construct it. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building, looking at a scenario similar to recent scenarios, except this time we have a hypothesis testing instead of confidence intervals using T distributions as opposed to normal distribution. And we have a two di tail distribution situation as opposed to a one tail distribution type of situation. Similarities being we want to find information about a population, but the population is too large to sample every item within it therefore the strategy as ever is to be taking a sample of the population testing the sample hoping we can apply the findings found from the sample to the larger population typically two ways to do this one being hypothesis testing two being confidence intervals confidence intervals lending itself to situations where we don't know what the middle point is therefore we take the sample we test the sample we take the mean of the sample as our center point constructing then a range around it in some way shape or form we're going to be looking at hypothesis testing here where we imagine that we have an idea of what the middle point is or should be of the population we construct our graph around that middle point then we think about taking a sample and we think about what the middle point or mean of the sample is to determine if it's far enough away from our original hypothesis in order for us to reject the original hypothesis the thought process being similar to that of a legal system in the united states where you probably started the court case because you suspected there might be someone who is not who is guilty of something but the assumption is innocent till proven guilty until you find enough evidence uh, in order to say that they're guilty to a very high degree of surety same thing here we're going to say we think we know what the middle point is graph around the middle point unless we get a test that has a high enough level of surety to determine that that original hypothesis is not correct all right so we have a two-tail type of situation noting that that means that we're we're looking at either side of the tail so we're going to imagine here we have a total hours or how many hours it takes to produce something and we want to say we want to see if that uh, amount is correct both on in terms of whether it's too high on the hours or too low on the hours and therefore we're looking at the error on either side now if you were to do a similar type of scenario and you're trying to implement a new system to see if the new system is faster than the old system that might be an example of a one tail type of situation if we're just trying to say this is the production hours that we have that we're basically testing for and budgeting upon and we want to see whether or not the actual time as we test it is either high or low then we end up with our two tail kind of situation that we have here 
Now, that means that we can also measure these in terms of X's or standard deviations. And if we want to measure in terms of standard deviations, we have to determine whether or not we're using a Z distribution or a T distribution. Normal distributions have a Z distribution, which we would typically use if we have some more confidence or information about the spread of the data, which would typically be the case if we know what the standard deviation or spread of the population data is. If we don't know what the standard deviation of the population data is, then we might, uh, we might then switch to using T distributions, in which case we're gonna have a same bell curve but fatter tails, which is what we're going to do this time. That means if we have fatter tails, that means that instead of having 95% of the data within two standard deviations, to get that same 95% in the middle area under the curve, we would have to have a larger or wider array in terms of T's instead of Z's, right? Because it's gonna be a larger interval in order to encompass the same range in the middle, also remembering that the T distribution graphs will be dependent upon uh, the degrees of freedom, which is basically based on the sample size in essence and the number of samples, which we will get into as we go. So that's gonna be the general idea. All right, uh, if we go to the practice session or the practice tab, we're gonna have pre-formatted cells so you can work through the practice problem with less Excel formatting if you choose to do so. But on the blank tab, we're just gonna have a blank sheet so you can follow along with a blank sheet if you so choose. So we're gonna go ahead and select the whole thing and throw down our baseline formatting, right clicking on it, formatting the cells. I'm gonna to go to currency, negative numbers are red and bracketed, no dollar sign, removing the decimals to start off with. We will add the decimals as we go and we're gonna say, Okay. All right. So I'm going to type in the header. We're, if I misspell things, I apologize. Oh, wait a sec. I'm going to make it bold too. I like to make it bold. You don't need to, but I think it helps in the screencast. Bolderizing it. All right. So then I'm going to say this is going to be hypothesis testing. I don't think I spelled that right, but uh, I'm going to keep going. It's going to be T distribution to tail to tail. And that's what we'll do. Let's review that. Did I spell that right? Hypothesis. No. Idiot. Okay. That was there's that was uncalled for. Let's make this larger. Let's make this black and white. Home tab font group making this black and white for the header. And then we'll say from the perspective of the researcher or company. Uh, we want, let's just call this production hours, even though it's going to be a large number, production hours for uh, a large project. We're going to say 9,500. We're going to say the STD of the population is not known, which is one of the factors that would say to us that maybe we should be using T distributions instead of normal distributions. From the company perspective, the question is, is the, or are the hours, hours correct? Uh, is is gonna be basically the question. And we want to see whether they're correct in terms of, are they too high or are they too low? And then in terms of the H sub A, and that's gonna be the alternative. Well, let's make this, H sub O, which is the high, the, the null hypothesis, which I probably spelled wrong again. Let's make this O a sub, right clicking, format the cells, making it a subscript. And okay, let's make this uh, black and white. So I'll make this black, white as a header. I'll make this black, white as a header. And I'm gonna they're gonna assume assume uh, hours. Let's say assume hours are correct, or we're in. That's the correct amount of hours on average. The alternative 
alternative hypothesis. That's definitely spelled wrong. All right, I have to fix it. Spell check. Uh, as to ch ignore that one, change that one, change that one, change that one. Hypothesis. Hypotha. Hypothesis. Okay. Is that? Let's make this a, a subscript A. Selecting it, right click on it, format the cells. Subscript. Okay, is going to be the conclusion if the null hypothesis is rejected. And that's going to be that uh, the hours are different. And let's make that black, white. So that's going to be our general idea. So we might have a suspicion that the actual amount of hours it takes is going to be substantially different. That's why we might be doing the test, or it might just be a part of an, a normal audit process where we're assuming maybe that it's correct, but we have to do our due diligence to make sure it's, it's correct. But even if we suspect that it's not correct, we would align the test so that it would be so that we can then gather the evidence to determine whether it is or is not correct. So in our case, we're, we're going to say then, let's make this orange. I'm going to say this is like the given information. So I'll make it, is that orange? Or I'll make it this orange. And then I'll make this orange. And I'll make this orange. And then I'll make this, let's make this orange too. And so we're going to say, do it, do it. And make this black and black. So that's going to be our given uh, information. This is the standard deviation is not known. Okay, right, let's make a small C or a skinny C. So we're going to do like we normally do creating the actual population. This is the behind the scenes information that we know that isn't known uh, within universe. So we're going to say the actual population mean we're going to build a, an average around 9,700. We're going to say hours. So it's not exactly the same, but it's kind of close to what we assumed here at the 9,500. So whether or not we reject it will be dependent upon, you know, how far away it is. That might not be far enough away for us to, to reject it. So STD of the population we're going to say is 2,450, let's say. I'm going to make this this red because it's something that we know or are going to use to construct our actual population data and white that isn't known in universe. I'm going to make a skinny F by taking the skinny C home tab format paint to skinny F. And then we'll make our data. Data, let's make that black and white up top, making it black, white, centered we'll put the data right there by going to the data tab we have to go into the analysis tool which if you don't have it turned on look it up turn it on chat gtp it possibly prob probably give you the instructions to do so so then we're going to go to the random number generation and we're going to make a random number one 500 numbers just because that's our normal default which is enough numbers for a population to at least be used, but not too many. So it shouldn't take too long for the system to populate it. We're gonna make it around the center point of 9,700 with a standard deviation of 2,450. So it's not gonna be completely random. It's gonna be random around the center point of 9,700 because we would expect if we're producing things that are the same in nature, then you would expect that you'd have a center point and it would be data that would be somewhat normally distributed, which is something that we would kind of want to be the case if we don't know the standard deviation, uh, be, because it's, and especially the case if we take a fairly small sample size, because it's likely that the central limit theorem might not kick in as strongly for us to be able to, uh, to have that nice bell-shaped curve when we take the mean of all possible combinations of sample, which we'll talk more about shortly, but where's it gonna go? Right there. All right, let's say okay, and let it generate that. Look how fast it did that. Man, I thought it was gonna take a little while. Let's right click on, I was trying to, I was gonna get a drink of coffee, but it was like, no, it's too fast, you don't get no coffee. 
let's make this let's make this uh numbers uh currency negative numbers bracketed get rid of the dollar signs we don't really need the decimals either so that won't remove the decimals entirely It'll, it just won't show the decimals we'll say okay and let's make it bold i'm going to make it bold so it matches i'm also going to make it red and uh red because this is the behind the scene data red and white that isn't known in universe i'm going to make a skinny h now by taking the skinny f format paint to the skinny h is this a different color red it doesn't look the same is it just because i use this maybe this is the red i want let's make it bordered around it and then we're going to say so now let's do the actual pop mean so this was the data that was used. This was the information used to generate the data. We should get about the same mean, but it shouldn't be, it won't be exact. Equals the average of all of this. Control shift down, control backspace. There's the info, enter. So it's close, but not exact. So that's the actual population number. Why, why did I put this down here instead of up top? Okay, I'll fix that in a second. And then the actual STD of the pop is the STDs of the population. Control shift down, control backspace. There we have it, enter. So it's not exactly this number, but fairly close. Let's do a count as well, which we know is gonna be 500, but let's double check it. Count tab of these numbers, control shift down, backspace, or enter <laughs> 500. All right, I'm gonna move these up by I'm going to select these cells up top and I'm going to delete them in such a way that it moves the cells below it up. How to do that? Right click, delete the cells. Oh, wait a sec. What is that? It's not what I wanted to do. Right click and then delete and then shift up. Por favor, please. And then there we have it. All right, let's make this red and white bordered red white that's the behind the scenes data still this is what we know that they don't know in universe now let's do the sample in universe where of course they would have to do some actual testing we're going to say they run 75 tests to see how long something actually takes or they look up the data to see how long something actually takes so we'll say let's go to uh, home tab format paint to make a skinny K and then we'll do a count. I'm gonna make 75 numbers, one, two, and select those, buckle your shoe, cause we're going down 75. Shoes don't have buckles anymore unless you have a weird shoe, whatever. You know what I mean? Tie the laces, put the Velcro, put the Velcro on and then let's go. So there we have it. And then we're going to say this is going to be the sample. And this is going to be now we could just take 75 from here because they were randomly generated. Or we could put a random number generation next to it and then shuffle both columns like shuffling a deck of cards. But what I'm going to do is the index function. So this equals index tab of this array, control shift down, control backspace. And then I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before all the letters and numbers in the array, cause I wanna copy it down, comma. And then I wanna do a random between the top row and the bottom row, otherwise known as the, the row one, which is actually the bottom to the top, we're gonna to call it, to row 500. So give me a random, number generation between those and there it is boom copy it down double click in the fill handle to copy it down there's our random numbers they're going to keep on jiggling around as i double click on it but i'm cool with that we're good with that because that'll that'll actually make it more interesting so let's go up top home tab font group making this header black and white and then center it Let's select our data, control shift down, make that blue and bordered this time, bordered, drop down. If you don't have that blue, it's in the more colors, standard color wheel. There's the blue, I like that one. Okay, there it is. And then I can double click on these and make it a little smaller. All right, so then let's make a skinny N. 
Then let's make a skinny in. Home tab, format painter, skinny in. I'm just going to restate our hypothesis with symbology this time because I'm a symbologist. So H sub Z, H zero, I'll make it a sub zero soon, colon mu, which I'm gonna go to the insert tab, symbols. If you don't have the mu, it's under the Greek and Coptic, but I've got it down here. So I'm just gonna pick that H sub mu and then okay, double clicking on or selecting the O, format, subscript, okay, H sub O of mu, which is the mean equals, don't click the arrows, just hit equals and then enter. And then this is gonna equal what we said, 9,500, 9,500. That's what we assume it to be. And then it's a two tail test. So that's what it equals. And then that means that our H sub A colon, and then symbol mu insert close it subscript the a right click format subscript okay h sub a the alternative hypothesis is not equal which should be an equal sign with a line through it but we don't have that in excel so we put this uh less than greater than for not equal and that's the 9500 so remember, the idea is that it takes 9,500. That's what we assume. We're running an audit on it, let's say, and we're trying to say, is, it, is that true or not? Meaning I want to know if it's either on the high side or the low side. Either way, it would not equal then the 9,500. Let's double click the P, making it a little smaller. Let's just double click all of this stuff, make it a little thinner, a little bit easier to manage, a little nicer looking, a little trimmed down. We're going to go here and go home tab, font group, border blue. All right, so that's going to be our information. Let's go ahead and then make a skinny R, selecting the skinny. I think that's an N, home tab, format painting, skinny R. All right, let's say now we're going to say the alpha or A, which equals alpha is gonna be 0.01. So instead of using 0.05, this is somewhat generic that we're using. We're making it more restrictive using 0.01. Okay, so that's gonna be then, then we're gonna say that the N, which is the sample size, which we know was 75, but let's double check it with a good old formula. And this is gonna be equal to the count tab of these numbers in the sample, control shift down, control backspace. There's our formula, enter, okay. And then we want the degrees of freedom, which I'm gonna call DF, degrees of freedom. We haven't been seeing that in the normal distribution calculations because it's something that we need to know in the t-testing, which will help us to determine which actual graph, how fat the tails should be, which we used to have to select in a textbook, but now Excel will be able to determine how fat the tail should be, which graph should to use. It does so based on the degrees of freedom, which is calculated as the sample size minus the number of samples. We only have one sample of 75, so minus one gives us 74. X bar is gonna be the sample mean. Now remember, the thing that we're actually going to be graphing here is, is the, we're imagining that we're graphing <clears throat> the all possible, the mean of all possible combinations of sample size 75 out of the population in our case of 500. And, and, that's, and so that's what we're actually graphing. So you could think of the mean of the population. Uh, you could think, which we don't know, although we're approximating what we approximated or hypothesize it to be. Then we have the mean of the sample, which hopefully approximates this, the mean of the population. And then you imagine the mean of all of the means of every possible combination, which is the thing that we're actually graphing of sample size 75 all three of those should tend towards the same number, that being the mean of the population. So we're gonna be taking the mean of the sample equals the 
mean or the average, is how you say it in Excel, average of the sample, control shift down, control backspace, there it is, and enter. All right. So then we're going to take that. And so, so notice that's okay. That's okay. That's somewhat different right now than, than the actual population mean, but that's, you know, it's somewhat random. If I keep on double clicking on it, it'll keep on changing. So now it's closer, right? Any case, let's go to the STD of the sample. So now we're going to take the standard deviation of the sample. Remembering this graph has a spread of the data, which is going to be based on the standard deviation, but not on the standard deviation of the population or the sample, which will approximate the population, but rather on the standard deviation of all possible combinations, the mean of all possible combinations, which we will do with a formula called the standard error, but will be based on and using the standard deviation of the sample, because in our case, we don't know the standard deviation of the population, which is why we're using T distributions as opposed to normal distributions. Okay, so the STDs of the sample is going to be these control shift down control backspace, there's the form you lie. And so it's pretty close to the standard deviation of the population, but not exact because it's a sample. And the smaller the sample is, the more likely it's not going to be as close to the population, which is why, again, we might want to tend towards using the T distribution in that case, because that's going to have the fatter tails, which will compensate for that problem. All right. So then we've got the standard error calculation, standard error, SE standard error. Now the standard error is the standard deviation of the actual units we're going to use for the graph. So now, and it represents the, the, sta the, the standard deviation if we assume all the mean of all possible combinations of sample size 75 out of the population, in this case of 500 is the population size. So we calculate this with our standard formula equals the standard deviation of the population if we had it, but we're imagining we don't have it. We actually do behind the scenes, but we don't have it in universe. So we're gonna take the standard deviation of the sample instead divided by the square root, which is a formula, square root of the sample size, in this case, 75, close it up and enter. So then there it is. We can add some decimals just to decimalize it a bit. And then we're gonna get then the T, let's calculate the uh, T distribution uh, or the T, which is gonna be equal to the test statistic. So now we're going to pick up the test statistic. Now, remember, we built, we're, we're imagining we're building our graph around the center point, the center point being the hypothesized amount of 9,500. Then we actually ran the test and we got a middle point of 9,837. In this case, in our sample, this, this is not the exact same we got because we keep on changing. It's a random number. But now I can figure out in terms of Z's, how far away this is. So remember, we have two X calculations down here. We have the X in terms of the units that we're talking about. I believe it's hours here versus standard deviations, which would be measured in Z's. But because it's a T distribution, it's going to be in T's. But the calculation converting from the X to the T or Z is the same. All right. So we're going to go over here and say this is going to be equal to what we what we got 9478 that's going to keep changing but that's what we have thus far minus the hypothesized 9500 dividing that by the standard deviation of the actual graph which is not the standard deviation of the population or of the sample right we're using the standard error and that will give us the distance in units adding some decimals boom 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 to to give it a little bit more detail so we're getting close to two standard deviations out, which is fairly far out in, in normal standard deviations, but not as far out with a T distribution because the T distribution has fatter tails in it. Remember that 95% of the data would be within two standard deviations if it was a normal distribution or 1.96 or so. Okay, well then let's do a a 
uh, p value p value calculation which is which is going to be calculating the ends uh, the, the the end at this point so we're trying to calculate what the area at that point what the area would be remember that these these two little bits on the end if it was a normal two-tailed distribution oftentimes we use 0.05 which means that 95 would be in the middle and then the two would be like if it was a two tail five divided by two but this time we decided to have alpha be one and so so that means we're gonna have a very small tails on both sides because it's going to be 0 0.005 basically on both sides and then we need to have the p distribution if the area that we get is is less than that like if we got a number over here then the area would be less than the blue part of the graph. And that's when we would uh, reject. So we're going to say then that this is going to be equal to, and we'll say this is going to be equal to, and we have to say uh, brackets one minus this is a little bit wonky. The t dot dist, t dot dist tab. And then we want the X, which is a little weird because it's actually, we're going to be picking up this test statistics, comma, and then the degrees of freedom. So not the sample size, but the degrees of freedom, sample size to, to minus the number of samples, which was one, comma. Do we want it to be cumulative? Uh, yes, we do. So one there. And then we're going to close that up. And the reason I needed to put brackets around it is because now I, ne I need to take this entire thing and multiply it. Uh, times two. So, okay, so again, the basis of the formula is the t distribution, right? But that's going to give us that's going to give us one side, and really we want to have the upper side. So that's why we have one minus to give us the upper side, and then I'm going to take that entire thing and multiply it times two, so that we have the two tails that will be uh, needed. Let's go ahead and decimalize that. Go do, 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 decimalized. All right, so there we have it. And we're trying to determine if this number is less than this number, then uh, we would reject it. So it's not, so we're not going to reject it. So, so I could say, okay, so let's go ahead and say this is going to be equals if tab if this number is less than uh, this number, then we want you to reject, quote, reject, end quote, comma, if not, quote, no, reject, and then end quote, and close it up, and okay. So it's not rejecting it based on uh, that calculation. So if we just do this a couple times, no reject all right and then we'll, let's do uh the the p value this is for this is if we had like a t well say t let's say let's imagine we had the p value for a z distribution let's make a capital p so if this was the same this this calculation would be the same but let's imagine now that we're, we're just using the normal normal distribution uh, calculation. So then we would have this would be uh, equal to equal to actually, you know what, instead of doing that, there's another way that we can calculate the T the distribute the same the same thing. they have another formula. So let's look at that. This equals the T dot dist and then they have the two tail. So they haven't included this one. So it's a little less intuitive, kind of, because like converting this kind of makes sense to me because I've done that before possibly. But anyways, if we do it this way, then all we would need to do is to take this T and then the degrees of freedom, which is the 74 and enter, and we should get the same result. Duh, 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 duh. So that's interesting. And then we've got then uh, the critical value. So I can also think about it in terms of what's the critical value, the threshold that I would have to get past in order for us to reject the hypothesis. Notice we have a critical value on the low end and of course a critical value on the high end given it's a uh, two-tailed test. So we can calculate down here 
critical crit critical value lower calculation which is going to be equal to the t dot inverse tab of uh, the probability so we're looking at this one uh, wait a sec of the probability that should be alpha right alpha uh, the probability and then divided by two because we're looking at half on each side I'm on just looking at the lower side here and then comma the decrees of freedom are 74 uh, that we want and then closing that up enter let's add some decimals to it do, 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 do. okay and then once we have that I can copy this and paste it here and say now I want the critical value for the upper which is just going to be because it's symmetrical negative of that number and then I'll add some decimals dot 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 so there we have that let's add one more what did I have one more here all right and so then I could also there's also another formula for it so I could say critical value lower and critical value upper with this formula which is going to be I'm going to say equals the t dot inverse and then we have the two tail here and we want the probability of one so once again it's got this two tail formula giving us that two tail for us comma degrees of freedom is going to be the 74 so there it is and enter so adding some decimals I should get the same number do 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 it and then uh, that should be and I want the negative the lower so I can take this and I could make it negative right and I could do the same formula uh, here or I can once again just take the negative of that and then do 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 okay all right, let's make this whole thing bordered in blue. Border blue. Border blue. Control, I'm holding down control. Border blue. All right, and then let's graph this thing out to finish this thing off. Graph it out to finish off. We're going to make a skinny V by taking this skinny, format paint it, skinny V. All right, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to say T and then and then i can take the x and then the p of x and then we'll and then we'll do the range so let's make this black white centered for our header black white center i'm going to take the negative t's so i'm just trying to change change a range in t's which are equivalent to v's remembering that four standard deviations should be a large enough range to encompass all of our data for practical purposes so it's going to be negative 4 negative 3.99 selecting those two adding some decimals decimalizing to recognizing and then i'm just going to fill handle copy it down i should use a sequence formula but i still think this doesn't take too much time once we know what we're doing possibly faster than the sequence thing uh even though it's a little wonky you can see i have to kind of like work it got to work it a bit but there it is and then the x so if that's going to be if that's my t which measures in essence the standard deviations it's going to be the t times the the standard deviation that we're using which is the standard error that's the one we're going to use to graph i'm going to put f4 in the keyboard so i can copy it down and then i'm going to i'm going to add that which will subtract it because it's a negative number to the to the middle point the middle point of the graph is the hypothesized 9,500, not the amount that we got from the sample. That's the amount that we're gonna compare it to to see if it's far enough away from the 9,500. So we're gonna say, okay. And now that last one also needs to be F forward, meaning dollar sign before the letter and the number absolute referencing it, putting my cursor back on it, double clicking it down. Then the, the uh, P of X is, I'm gonna use the T distribution equals T, dot dist and then tab it's kind of funny because i'm going to use the t over here even though it says x comma degrees of freedom is going to be 74 f4 on the keyboard so i can copy it down comma cumulative no therefore zero close it up enter percentify and decimalize in order to recognize 
and then we'll copy it down, ba boom. All right, and so then let's graph it out and see if it does what we would expect it to do. Control shift down, control backspace, insert our good old graph. Charts, and I want more charts. I want all charts. I want an area chart. Ba bam, slam. And then we're gonna say, let's make this one, uh, let's get rid of the title. Dut. And then I'm gonna say that it's gonna be, let's make it a little smaller so I can see it here. It's gonna be data. And then I wanna start, let's make it with the X's on the graph. X's, control shift down, control backspace, not showing up. So I'm gonna select this. And then again, there it shows up, okay. Mui B to the N, B, N. I also wanna put the Z's down there and I wanna graph the little ends of the graph which are the upper and lower critical values that are measured in terms of T's, which are equivalent to Z's. So let's put a hover over here if it was a normal distribution, but we have a T distribution. So this is gonna be, let's say this is gonna be equal to this negative number has to be less than T, which has to be less than the positive number. So T's gotta be greater than this and less than that. Doesn't like that because it's a text field, so I'm gonna go back in it. The text part is in the middle. So I'm gonna put quotes around the text part. And so that to that, and then this should be a small t. And then I need to put an and between the quote and after the quotes, before the quote and after the quote and enter. So there it is, but now it's got those long decimals. So I'm gonna go back in it again and round tab to comma two decimals, close it up. And then before this one, we want to round tab, comma to two decimals, close it up, enter, much better. All right, can I do that with a, with a, uh, with a formula? It's gonna have a logic test and an and test because there's two conditions. So it's gonna be if tab, whoa, wait, I need an equals, equals if tab and tab, embedding the, the and in the if and i'm going to say if logic test uh uh if this number is uh this 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 number has to be greater than this number comma test number one and that number also has to be less than this number test number two, closing up the and. If those two conditions are met, comma, second part of the if function, we want you to give us the percent. What if it's not true, comma, then we want you to give us a blank cell, quote, blank, quote, end it off, okay. Now I gotta go back into it because to, to copy it down, all the ones that are outside in column T, I need to make absolute. So there's one T, F4 on the keyboard, absolute reference size in it and then absolute referencing that one and enter. Now I'm going to go and make it a percent, add some decimals, double click it to copy it down. And the middle numbers are the ones that should be showing up. There they are. Let's graph it and see if it does what we would expect. It should add a middle bit and only leaving the outer tails to be blue, the middle bit being orange. That's what I'm imagining will be happening once we are doing what we're gonna be doing. So let's go ahead and say we want to go to the data. We want to add data. It's going to be, this is the series name. And the data is going to be doot -doot right here. Control shift down, control backspace. It's not showing up yet because it's only got one number. So boom, boom, there it shows up. And then bam, and then bam. Now I want to add the T's on the bottom. That's going to be this column, another X, which will be the T's. So to do that, I double click here, secondary axis, okay. I don't want it over here though, so I'm gonna delete that. But instead, data, secondary axis, changing the edit field. I want this to be the T's. Wait a second. I want this to be the T's, control shift down, control backspace. It's not showing up over here yet. Selecting this and again, shows up, boom, boom. But it's not down there yet, so I'm gonna say plus axes secondary horizontal but i don't want it at the top so more options selecting the one i want put it at the bottom if you will 
Boom. All right. So there we have it. Now let's just check it out. Insert. Let's put a little line in it and just test out, see what we got here. What do we got? We've got then the middle point of the graph should be at 9,500 or zero in terms of T distributions. Zero in terms of T distributions about 9,500 about is the middle point. And then we're going to say that the critical values are at the 2.6 and 2.6 when we're looking at it in terms of T's. So that would be up here. So around 2.6 down to here and around 2.6 down here. Okay. And so that converts to an equivalent in X's around like that 10, 320. And then the, the eight, nine, which we could kind of see if I, if I can, if I looked at this, right, we did the conversion here and then, and then what we came out with is a middle point of 9,000, uh, 945, 9,945 uh, in X's. So that's 9,009 uh, 9, something, somewhere around here. So clearly, clearly it has not cleared. It hasn't gone into the blue. And that's why we have not rejected because we have a fairly high threshold for it to be getting into the blue, given the fact that we have alpha at 0.01, which means the little blue areas over here on each side are really only 0.05% uh, of the graph and 99% of the graph is, is in the middle. So even though we're a bit far over here on the left, you might say that's evidence for something if we didn't have such a high threshold to clear to say that from the analogy of innocent till proven guilty, we have a fairly high threshold to clear before we say that the middle point is guilty. We found it to be guilty and we have not yet reached that. We're not in the blue area. So we're going to, we're going to call it innocent, even though you still might say, eh, maybe, maybe we're, maybe it's too high a threshold. Maybe we should, right. You could make that argument, but again, nothing's perfect because we're dealing with statistics here and that's the, how we're going to set up the hypothesis. All right. Let's make this blue and bordered, bordered and blue. I should spell check it, but I'm just going to leave it there for now. All right.